Um, I'm going to be at the College Music Society uh, National Convention at the end of this month, and I'm part of a, a very um, important panel to me because it's called Girl Geeks and Tech Divas. <laughs> and, and we're going to talk about women in technology, women in music technology. And, and it's something that's very near and dear to all of our hearts because we are a rather closed society. And in, in other words, it's a very small group of music ed tech people. It really is. It's not a huge group. And so we all know each other. We've all known each other for years and years and years. Um, and it was so funny when, when Chris walked in and said, oh, yeah, we met at the Perfect Center, you know, because the world is very small in this world. And there are very few women. So it's, it's really, um, I'm, I'm just thrilled to see so many women in the audience. And, and um, just ignore that gender gap thing. Just go for it. Just, just, just uh, you know, ignore all of the, all of the, um, Oh, go! You can, you take care of this or take care of that, and and girls I think have uh, more opportunity sometimes than guys. So we'll talk about some of these trends, some of these issues, some of these uh, things that are going on in the world today. What I want to talk about is just a short introduction of my own background. Some change and shifts happen. One of my very favorite bumper stickers. Um, networking and social media, uh, we'll talk with uh, a special guest that I'm having coming in, Alan Molnar, and we'll talk about performance practices, some things that are trending, some things that we're looking out into the future to do. Um, as was mentioned, I'm on the instructional design team, and uh, so I'll talk about some design ideas and resources that you might use. Um, just a quick one on choosing software, because that's really, really critical to the whole idea of incorporating and integrating technology. And then the one-to-one -one versus one-to-world idea. I'm going to spend just a few minutes with that as a wrap-up and then look at where the future is for music technology. So my first computer was in 1984. I had this little Commodore 64 up in the corner. And it was the coolest thing ever. And I had two really <coughs> geeky nephews who got me into the whole thing, and there was a, and, and I used to run home from school and watch Star Trek, you know, because I said, oh, someday that is so going to be me, <laughs> you know, and I just put it away. So when this first came out, I said, I, I got to have it. And in my piano studio, I had kids, um, there was a little program that allowed them to input some melody notes, and from those melody notes, this little dancer would do things. And, and they would they would spin her around the floor and, and do all these really cool things. And at the end of everybody had a chance to do that, we had a little recital for all of us in the classroom talking about which one was the most artistic or fun or you know which one should be shared for recital and then they all decided which one should be a recital. So that was that was very, very early. Um, then I went up to a Mac Plus, which you can see see in the corner, and I use it as a doorstop. And then um, I upgraded to a Mac LC in a Quadra. So now I've got this whole setup, and I had a four piano setup for my private piano studio. So I had my acoustic piano where I was giving lessons most of the time, and then I had this four setup. And of course, that all of my computers were named for Star Trek warships. So. <laughs> and I had Star Trek pictures and posters all over the room. Not music. <laughs> I, I had the Star Trek thing going on, so that was just my mindset, I guess. And then in 1907, or 1996, rather, I joined Valley City State University, which was the second university in the nation to go laptop with every student, every faculty member. So the one-to-one -one was very early in my life. I mean, at my whole working career at the university level has been one-to-one. -one. Um, and we had a, a female president at the time who made this giant leap. And she stood in front of us and said, if you are not with me on this, there's the door. The bullet train is leaving, get on it, we're in the station, we're about to go. So I want everybody on board and I want you to do what you will. I know you'll do great things with this. You know, and she was just so positive and so excited. And talk about a nimble little university. <laughs> we did not get any new money, we reallocated. All of that funding came from reallocation and a little bit of student fee. 
So it was amazing what we did. And then finally, I went to the MacBook in 2009 when BCSU decided to open up the idea to Macs. Up until that time, everyone had the same laptop, same image. And it did make life a lot easier for IT. But the cry out for Mac was really so loud that they could not ignore us. And so um, now about half of the campus is Mac and half of the campus is PC. So by department, we choose who gets what. And then, of course, I added the iPad and iPhone. This is a slide that, that is very near and dear to my heart. Change. It's hard. But don't limit a child to your own learning, for he was born in another time. And that's applicable to even your age. Kids born today are not living in the same world that you grew up in already. The rate of change is so fast that unless you are open-minded to everything, the world will pass you by. It's really critical, I think, that, that this be foremost in your mind all day today. Change is hard, but it's important, and we need to do it. And that doesn't mean we drop everything we believe in at the doorstep and just move on. Some things are valuable to bring with us into the future, and I'm all about that. <clears throat> My daughter is a composer and does very traditional things. <clears throat> Excuse me, but she does very untraditional things too. So it's just a matter of doing it all. And I have a, a wonderful little video that I'd like to share uh, on this topic. Uh, 
uh, education. So design concepts. What I want you to think about all day today is beginning with the end in mind. If you're going to use technology, why? What's your end? What's your goal? We don't use technology just for technology's sake. And think about using essential questions to guide the, the organization of those goals. So, go to the heart of your discipline. What does it mean to be a musician? Have no obvious one right answer when you set up these essential questions. And be deliberate about framing them so that students are piqued and motivated to continue. That's hard. This kind of design is very hard, but it's worth trying, it's worth doing. So for example, the first day of music theory class, I walk in and I say, so what is music? <laughs> wow, they can't answer that. They have no idea what is music. That becomes the driving force of a lot of things that we talk about in theory. Not the value of it, but what is it? What is it? That's what theory kind of is, right? It's the mechanics of it. What is it? And then how do the mechanics make it thrilling? So um, continue to ask those things and, and then support it with unit learning. So technology can really push that envelope, push past facts, push toward analysis, application, synthesis, and use those uh, levels of Bloom's taxonomy, perhaps you're aware of this, where it starts from left to right. Remembering is the easiest things. That's a flashcard. Understanding is maybe summarizing what something means. Applying is actually using figure base to create um, a voice lead. Analyzing might be looking at Handel's Messiah and saying, OK, that's, I, I can reduce it to figure base. Um, Evaluating is more of the judgmental thing. Is, it, is, it, is this a good voice lead or is there a better voice lead? You know, that sort of questioning. And then finally, creating. Totally coming out of nowhere and, and using all of those things to, to bring something brand new to life. Obviously, composition is on the outside edge of that. And I actually was looking at smart music, and I think smart music follows those things just beautifully. Um, all the way out to the creating with the, with the uh, jazz and prop stuff. But, but keep this in mind as you're looking at software. At what level is this software operating? There's way too much stuff available down here. And while that's fine at the introductory level, you want to get up to here. You want to get up in the upper reaches. So think about how you can stretch and expand those settings. So how many of you use social media? Let me see the hands. <laughs> okay. That's what I thought. All right, so now let me just see how many use Facebook. Wow, okay. How many use Google Apps? That's coming. Twitter? All right, a few die hard. That tends to be. Um, when you're tired of Facebook, go to Twitter. Uh, Pinterest, largely girls. Look at that. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting, isn't it? Tumblr, okay, some of us use that. Instagram, wow, see, and I don't use these. I have no clue. Padlet or wish, wall wisher. I do have a, I do have a couple of screenshots of wall wisher and or Padlet, which used to be Wall Wisher, and VoiceThread, which is my current favorite. This is what VoiceThread looks like, maybe. There it is. And what, what you can do here is upload a graphic. So this is how I actually do my, my workbook stuff in, um, in theory. I'll put it up there, and then I'll assign a group of students to go and work on that particular thing so that they do it in a discussion format. And I usually give my directions in a photograph. Yeah, there's my. So my photograph has all of my direction sets, who's going to do it, and so on. 